Before I begin this video, I would like to take a moment in congratulating Matt Pat on his retirement. On the day of recording the audio for this video, Matt Pat released his last game theory. There is no explaining the impact that this man has had on my life even to this day. In his retirement announcement, he had mentioned how important his audience is to him. Not his numbers on a screen or the next paycheck, but the individuals. That resonated with me and my hopes for my channels. So as Matt Pat steps down, I hope to be able to step up and build up a community that raises each other, all while I share my passion and love with all of you in the hope of being entertaining. So thank you, Matt Pat. You will be missed. And now, for your regularly scheduled program. As most of you may or may not have known, I have been hard at work on a video series detailing my time playing Sonic Adventure. Highly suggest you check it out after this video. This new series has brought on a good number of eyes to my channel who have shared a variety of opinions. One of these comments piqued my interest, however. Sonic Adventure stands still making videos when Sonic Frontiers is basically adventure but massively better. And although I personally find this take to not be exactly right for reasons we'll get into later, it gave me enough reason to finally make a video on what I would want to see in the future Frontier sequel that would make Warm Potatoes take a bit more accurate. Before I start though, if you're a fan of all things Sonic, I would love if you would subscribe to the channel as I have so much to share and would hate for you to miss out. And with that statement out of the way, let's get into the video. Sonic Frontiers from launch to today was a roller coaster of a ride, mostly considering the end of the game and its later revision through free DLC patches. Where before the patches, we had some of the craziest boss fights ever seen in Sonic's history, providing some of the best music in the Sonic series, as well as some of the coldest moments known to man, like Sonic grabbing onto Wyron to chuck him into the side of a mountain. That was just so awesome. But this game that gave us some of, if not the best boss fights in the Sonic series, fumbled so hard at the end, where not only did the tension of the cyber corruption was just shoot away through the power of friendship, but also your reward for playing through the hardest difficulty is a final boss of Galaga? When I had played this originally, I had sat in silence through the credits because there was no describing the bad taste it had left in my mouth. Now, there are those DLC patches that fix this issue, but it still goes to stand that mine and many people's final impressions of this game that had some of the best moments in Sonic history was f Galaga. And then they had to wait a year to play an actual ending to this game which isn't the best look for this title that is supposed to save the series. Which happily, the rest of the game was good enough to salvage that ending. Another important point to bring up is before the patches, we had an extremely fun experience that had some issues in the way Sonic controlled, with a lack of momentum, especially when you jumped, killing all the speed you had as it wouldn't carry into said jump. This problem was later mitigated with two additions that fundamentally changed how Sonic's movement could be utilized with the addition of a deceleration slider and the glorious spin dash. These two moves changed the game and how you could interact with the environment around you, taking these boring terrains and transforming it into Sonic's own personal skate park, opening up movement opportunities virtually everywhere. So with all that said, I can now get into what I want to see for the future of this new line of games. With the first important change being, I want the full game as one package. The base game before the DLC patches was so incredibly upsetting with its lackluster ending and friendship deus ex machina, it ruined the tension that the game had been building up perfectly up until that point. And once we did get the final story, it did have its own issues, but it made a better conclusion to the game and serviced the story a lot better. But it couldn't hold the same effect it could have since it wasn't part of the game from day one. 
By the time it came out, most of the people who had played the game were already let down by the original ending. So when we get the next title, the most important thing I could ask for is for Sega to deliver us a complete experience without having to wait a year after release to play the real ending to the game. This would also allow them to tell their story without having to break it up and ruin the tension, because imagine if Frontiers was a full package and we got to play as the side characters before helping Sonic's corruption, allowing us players to have some emotional connection to Amy, Knuckles, and Tails' efforts to help Sonic instead of them just holding hands and singing kumbaya to free him. The next important change I would like to see in the future are the environments. Sonic Frontier's environments are incredibly bland and basic. You run through pretty standard green pastures, sand, snowy volcanic area, and then the return of the green pastures. These environments by themselves aren't bad, but compared to the locations of Sonic's past, don't hold a flame to the likes of Seaside Hill, Station Square, or many other levels and hub worlds of the Sonic series. There was a lot of clear influence from Breath of the Wild, and I can see why. Not only was Breath of the Wild a huge success, giving Frontiers something to piggyback off of, but in having these more basic playgrounds to run around in, it gave Sega enough room to focus on the other aspects of the game, such as the gameplay. But now they have their formula, they know their direction, so now I expect more coming out of the environments in the next game. Some of what I would love to see for the future of open zones vary as there's so much you could do. For instance, I would love to see Sonic on a beach side, something that could have a pirate influence with shipwrecks, little beachside towns, or even stretching a bit here, an underwater portion where you get to explore the sea floor as you run past fish, brightly colored coral, and grab your air bubbles. But moving past beach sides, another zone I would love to see would be something themed in a city. Imagine seeing the city in the distance with the lights shining in the night luring you in. Billboards, signs, and attractions lining the streets. Like Sonic running through Las Vegas itself, making it not only a city level, but with the themes of casinos that Sonic is so associated with. There are so many possibilities and zones you could use for Sonic that would greatly surpass the bland grassy plains you run through in Frontiers. Things that would make players' jaws drop as they explore more of Sonic's world. Another important part of bringing these environments alive, however, is the addition of NPCs. Sonic Frontiers was designed to be a somber approach to the islands Sonic is running through. A good excuse for making these islands pretty much void of life for the most part. But as we breach the topic of city and town themed zones, it also brings to question the inhabitants. Whether it is the cars on the street, or the people that make their way to and from work, I can't help but wish we had people to interact with, and even give us side missions to give us more reason to explore the zones than just to collect tokens. Breathing life into these zones won't only help with the immersion into Sonic's world, but it adds the possibility for unique objectives, the potential for bosses to feel more threatening now that you know what's at stake, and much more. NPCs are an important part to shaping the gaming world, and it's something that I think the follow-up game desperately needs to take it to the next level and give more reason for continuous playtime. The last point I'd like to bring up in this video is cyberspace. The cyberspace levels, in my opinion, was one of my favorite parts of the Sonic Frontiers experience. The short stage length and fast reload time was a perfect blend for allowing me to try and perfect my runs. Playing through 1-2 was among the top moments for me in the entire game, but that is also in part by the tight S rank requirement, which brings up the importance of having tighter requirements in the level. If I am asked to race the clock, I, and I'm sure many other players, don't want to be able to walk to the goal and still get an S rank. I want there to be a rewarding feeling for accomplishing these stages, and if it was done this way for skill differences or issues, then it would be better to tie the clear conditions to the difficulty chosen. Because for a while now, the level difficulty has felt more like a garnish, just decoration and no use. This was something changed in the Final Frontier DLC, where the difficulty changed the tower platforming sections as well as the parry windows, among other small changes. So tying difficulty to the cyberspace clear conditions doesn't feel like the biggest ask. 
So editing Austin breaking in here, I was not aware that the extreme difficulty you get for 100%ing all the side objectives gave you tighter S rank windows. So, um, oops. And another part of cyberspace I would like to see changed are the levels themselves. It is written into the story that these levels are messed up recreations of Sonic's memories. So they reuse stage sections as well as assets from Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and City. I personally don't mind this. I actually really enjoyed running through the old stages. They are genuinely well constructed and with Sonic's new move techs, it allows you to explore these sections in an all new way. However, I don't think Sega can get away with doing this for a second time, so when it comes to the future of stages, I would like the aesthetic of these stages to match with the zones that they are in, given the zones take my advice and stop being bland. And if matching them to the zones isn't an option, then I would like to see Sega take a note from Breath of the Wild and create a template that would be shared in the levels. I wouldn't want it to be bland and boring like Breath of the Wild, but I would also like it to have its own aesthetic instead of reusing Generations assets. Like say instead of Cyberspace, the next game focuses on Sonic, I don't know, getting shrunk down like some type of Honey I Shrunk the Kid story. Then we could have a continuous level theme of overgrown weeds and huge bugs. Obviously not using that theme exactly. But getting the point across of making something new while also not doing too much depending on time constraints and other factors. And when it comes to the actual platforming part, I honestly liked the original levels we had gotten in Frontiers. I would love to see that expanded on, especially platforming that takes notes from the final tower climbs in the DLC. Like yes, they were challenging but it was easily my favorite part of that final DLC. The tower climbs were not only fun, but it had chunks where you could decide how to get across, like safely homing attacking enemies across a section, or risking it all and using a spin dash and a slope to fly past it. I like having options. It makes me feel like when I find a faster route or skip, that I truly earned it, and I would like to see that brought over into the future titles. It's why I like Sonic Adventures so much. The platforming is open and allows the player to express themselves in how they traverse through the levels. So TLDR, if Sonic Frontiers wants to rival the likes of games like Adventure, we need one, the full game from launch. Two, a concise story that's not broken up. Three, fresh level aesthetics that fit into the world of Sonic. Four, NPCs that liven up the location and provide side quests. 5. A difficulty choice that actually requires different skill levels. 6. New aesthetics for cyberspace. And 7. Original stages that are more open-ended, allowing players to carve their own paths. And in finding all seven of these points, Frontiers could transform into Super Frontiers, and not only become mine, but I'm sure many other people's all-time favorite Sonic game. But tell me what you think. Do you like the suggestions I made, or are there other things you would want to see implemented? Tell me in the comment section below. And while you're down there, I highly suggest subscribing. I, I really want to make this into my career. And making videos to entertain all of you is just something I'm passionate about. So your subscription could really help me get one step closer to that goal. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching this video, and I can't wait to see you guys next time.